The National Association of Realtors has stated they're going to pay the $418 million settlement over four years. Naturally, I'm wondering, what does that mean for members? Are member dues going to significantly increase in the near future? Will there be a special assessment on members? Will NAR take on a loan or long-term debt to make a short-term, relatively short-term, four-year payment of $418 million? So I'm wondering what sort of financials they're working with because they're facing a very difficult financial problem and they're walking a fine line. Of course, they don't want to saddle their members with a large financial burden. They don't want to have their members turn against them, but they also have a $418 million bill they're facing. So just out of curiosity, it led me over to look at what they're working with here. So now this is for 2022, 2023, of course, isn't out yet. But you can see even in 2021, their financials won't be radically different year to year. So we're looking here, we see revenue, okay? They had $328 million in revenue in 2022. Now their expenses were $306 million, which is to be expected. Their expenses are going to be near their revenue. After all, they are a nonprofit. So then we go on to their balance sheet. They have a billion in assets, and then they have liabilities of about a quarter billion so to get a little bit more of a better idea, we look at the tax return itself and we can see here, <clears throat> so current year, this is 2022. Now this is from membership dues alone, or at least I believe this is what this is, 315 million or just short of 316 million in membership revenue. And then some other auxiliary revenue from investments. And it shows that total revenue is 328 million. We knew that from the summary page we we're just on. And then you can see also that they have some expenses here, totaling about 306 million, which gives them only 22.6 million as wiggle room. So they're really, there's really not a lot of wiggle room in terms of how much they're bringing in. I mean, if they raise dues on us, how much is it gonna bump the number? You can see that in 2021, NAR brought in 312.5 million in what I believe is membership revenue. And they're, it's not that much greater in 2022. So what are they going to do even if they doubled membership dues? And of course you'd lose some agents if you did that, but it's still not going to be a enough to really take a chunk out of that $418 bill, but they have that billion dollars of assets, or do they? So let's take a look at their balance sheet. We see here cash, and they started the year with 100, about 113 million, and then ended the year uh, with 120, just short of 120 million. So let's just say 119, just to keep it more accurate. So they only have 119 million in cash. That's all their cash is 119 million. And that, that's, again, about a quarter or maybe a little over a quarter what they have to pay over four years. This is a big financial burden that they're facing. Now, of course, you can see their other assets. We'll just go through them real quick. Of course, they have money that's on the way to them, uh, prepaid expenses. I mean, these aren't significant numbers. They own some real estate. Of course, they have to take out the depreciation because if they ever liquidated that real estate, they'd have to contend with a depreciated asset, the depreciation that they've already uh, taken. And then, so they have they have they have 325, so almost a third of a billion invested in publicly traded securities, which is actually very interesting to me that they have all this money wrapped up in publicly traded securities. But that is two thirds of the bill or almost three quarters of the bill that they are that they have to pay this 418 million. I'm not implying that they need to sell this or liquidate it. They probably can't, that's the whole point. The big takeaway from this balance sheet, and I'll finish through it here quickly, but the big takeaway is they only have 120 million cash, that's it. Everything else is illiquid, everything else is tied up. You can see 325 million tied up in investments. And then they have, so just, 11 million, not a significant number. But look at this, 366 million in, in other program-related investments. These are invested, investments made, it, made that are going to, since they're program-related, that means it's related to some sort of uh, nonprofit-related or maybe a, a cause, an investment in a, in a for-profit entity that 
has some sort of social benefit like a nonprofit does rather than something like this, which is purely profit driven, or so I think. I'm just saying either way, it doesn't matter if I'm not perfectly accurate. I'm just saying that there are, there's just shy of 700 million in tied up investments. And let's see what else, other assets, intangible assets. Okay, so you have their assets over a billion. You have the 1.11 or 1.011 in a billion in assets. And then they have some expenses and that's how we get to this, the liabilities. So they have deferred compensation that they still have to pay out eventually someday. They have loans totaling about a quarter of a billion. That's why they only have about 747 million uh, in, on their balance sheet in terms of the value they hold. But as you can see, only 120 million of that is actually cash that you'd need to pay. That only, so only 120 is liquid. And what, what amount of 120 could even go toward that $418 million settlement? So when I look at this, I just think, geez, I would hate to be in their position trying to figure out how to, how to pay this off in four years without disrupting your member base and without having to cause taxable events and disrupt. I mean, there are, there are consequences to liquidating these investments. It's going to affect the value of the company. It's going to cause taxable events. It's going to, be, it's, it's, it's going to have an effect. So anyway, just want to share this with you. I don't know what they're going to do. They're probably still figuring it out themselves, but I'm very, very interested knowing this now and how constrained they are. How are they going to pay that $418 million? I'm sure someone watching this may have an idea maybe about what they could do or what it would look like to pay something like this. I don't know. I'm just sharing with you what I found online that I find kind of interesting because this, all this does ultimately trickle down to uh, the member base in terms of what they're paying and the future of the, of the uh, National Association. Anyway, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching.